Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're on site in my shop here in Utah Springs, Kansas. And what I have in front of me is a, is a workbench or a work table. And everybody likes to have a heavy-duty work table, and this is part of our do-it-yourself series. I was actually scanning through the, uh, the internet. I got on YouTube, and I saw this video that I couldn't believe. And it turns out there's a company here. It's called Tab and Slot. And I've got this, this sketch of this table. This is kind of the before. Uh, and it's like an egg crate. Uh, an egg crate configuration makes a, a very stiff table. And they've done some laser slots or holes in here. This whole thing comes in a kit. Uh, you have to weld it and you have to polish it and grind it. So I just want to share that with you. I'm not going to go through the 22 minute video that's already online that shows you how to build this. But it's very intuitive. And when I say that, it comes with instructions, or you can look at the video. I didn't watch the whole video. You know, we're, we're people that absolutely want to be able to put something together, and we don't read instructions. So I wanted to see how easy this was to put together. If you take a look at the construction of this, the, the tab and slot is, as the tab comes up through the slot, you weld it. And it doesn't matter how you weld it. You can use your little flux core, a little more cleanup, or you can stick weld it, or you can use that other uh, pull the trigger MIG process. Or you can TIG it. Uh, so what's practical, what looks best, what's cleaner? And we're gonna do both. We're gonna show you uh, exactly how I put this thing together. And I've, I've got about, oh, maybe two hours tops invested in this. Um, and uh, you know, it's like anything, if I put another one together, I'd have it together and weld it in an hour. So just know that we've got a two by three platform here. Yeah, so this table came, UPS came in two packages. UPS will carry up to 150 pounds. So if you contact them, just know that they'll build you any size and any shape and they'll quote it to you. Uh, freight, you know, depending on what size you decide to get, um, typically it won't come UPS unless it's one of the smaller tables like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my gear on, I'm gonna get everything together. And I didn't finish out the top of this table so you can see exactly the types of slots that it has. You know, this, this is the complete set. So when you go to order these, make sure you know that you're not just ordering the top. They have one that's, I think it's called a pro set. And it has the wheels. And I mean, this, this thing you can just move around. You know, right now with the wheels and everything, it, it's over a couple of hundred pounds but I can take it all over the shop and it just is not a problem. Wheels are, are heavy duty. You know, you get ready to do a project, just lock them in, all four wheels lock. Um, again, I'm just, I'm thrilled with it because I needed a new table anyway. I was gonna spend three, four, five hundred dollars building a table, going up to the local supply house and, and cutting it and putting all the, uh, the labor cutting and fabbing, but man, this is just good to go. Now, the only thing that I see here is and once you finish doing all your welding, yeah, you got some corners, you know, knock off the edges, but uh, we're gonna show you how to do that as well. So let me get my safety gear on and we'll get started. Okay, I've, I've set this up to, uh, to TIG weld these slots. Now what I've done is I've taken a, a filler material, and this is like 093 filler material, and it does a really good job. And uh, you can see one of them here that I've done. It, it'll leave it a little dished out, and that's okay, because all you're doing is you're trying to connect with the, the tab underneath. Uh, and when I'm welding this, and, and you're gonna get a chance to see me weld it live, it takes a little while. So if you start figuring out how many slots there are here, um, it, it does take a little longer, but it is a lot cleaner with TIG. So uh, let, me, uh, let me demonstrate one of the tabs. I'll weld it complete. They're already pre-tacked. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm using my 17, this is my CK17F or it's in flex head, uh, so I can just move it around. And, you know, I'm going to be welding this at about 140 amps. This torch will handle it. It's air cool, so you don't have to go water cooled right off the bat if you don't want to for the amount of uh, distance that you're welding. Uh, this will handle, you know, 200 amps short duration, so don't worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and weld this, and I'll probably have a torch on time of about a minute, min maybe a minute and a half. So uh, here we go.
this is a, it's a pretty clean steel. I don't see any uh, any popping. I don't see any sulfur popping out of it and phosphorus, that sort of thing. But you can see that I'm adding filler material. That filler material drops down in the bottom of the slot and uh, it, it adheres to it. I can see it making contact and fusing. Anyway, I'm, I'm about halfway through this slot right here. Okay, I'm, I'm getting near the end and again, I'm, I'm trying to keep it just a little bit concave. Um, you know, later on I'm going to go in and try to polish it down. So it, it's it's kind of a, a tough habit to make a weld concave. You always want to I just want to, you want to make the weld build up a little bit, but in this case, no, you just want it to be concave. So here's here's the weld. Here's what it looks like. Um, you know, you could time it. It probably took me a minute and a half, uh, something like that, to to weld. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this over. I'm going to do uh, MIG welding right beside it. Yes, you heard it, MIG welding. You know, logically, when you look at this, it's okay. I like to go through and tic tac. It's easier. It's cleaner. Uh, but when you start looking at how many slots there are, MIG welding's the fastest. So uh, I'm going to change my gear over, and, and uh, we'll join in just a few minutes. Okay, now I just finished welding with the TIG process. TIG process utilizes 100% argon. So whatever you do, when you start switching from TIG to MIG, make sure you get a specific gas for the MIG. Again, the MIG is going to be called what's well, a C25 mix. It's 75% argon, 25% CO2. So it's a pretty volatile gas. So do not use it for your TIG machine. Uh, nice thing about this table here is it's got hold down slots. It's a uh, it's magnetic, so I can use my magnetic torch holder. And I use this for, for MIG and TIG. Uh, it's just very handy. So uh, I've got, I've got the, uh, the C25 mix in here. I'm just using 025, you know, just really thin wire. It's an ER70S3. Uh, and I'm going to weld up these slots and finish out the entire table. So uh, flip my hood and uh, it won't take long. So it was really, it was just that quick, you know, and I'm sorry I couldn't save this for MIG Mondays, but i got to get the table finished. i got to show you uh, how to use it. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish off all the, all the slots that are not filled in. And, you know, a question always comes up, why do you have to weld so many places? Well, this design is so good because it's an egg crate, and if you lock it in in all the places, when you start welding on a part, the table's not going to bow on you. And that's a pretty good feature. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, weld the rest of the table, get it done, and then I'm going to take it outside the shop here and, uh, and sand, sand it and grind a little bit on it. So uh, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, I've got a, a four inch grinder here, uh, just a standard grinder, and I've got a, an aggressive wheel on it. Uh, so it's got a lot of abrasive on it. Now what I want to do is make sure that I, I don't hit the flat surface with this very much. I'm going to hit all the heavy buildup areas. I'm going to lightly touch them and kiss them off. Try to be very careful because I want this to be as flat as can be. I'm going to catch the edges. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to this wheel here. It's like a flapper wheel. It's a 60, 60 grit wheel. And then, uh, then I'm just going to go over the whole thing and then just kind of smooth it off, make sure that there's no edges and no uh, sharp points on here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'm going to do the edges first and then I'll kiss off the top a little bit then I'll change over.
Okay, now I've gone all over the top of this. I've hit the high spots. You can see some grinding marks here. I've, I've tried not to hit the flat surface. Uh, where I TIG welded, I didn't have to do much at all uh, because it was indented and I had good control. Now, perhaps if I'd have had Paul Gramp here doing my MIG welding, I wouldn't have to grind so much. But, uh, Paul, you weren't here, so I had to get it done. Anyway, I used this kind of a wheel, and you'll see that that's just a heavy grinding wheel. Uh, I'm not sure what grit it is, but, you know, it's kind of like body fender work. You start off with very rough, and then you go down to finer and finer. And so what I did is I took this wheel off. I put this wheel on. This is like a flapper wheel, and it's, it's a lot gentler, and it won't take off as much material. So I'm going to go ahead and kiss the surface uh, all over with this, and then we'll be done. as soon as I plug it in. Okay, well, let's take this back in the shop, and I, uh, I want to see what the flatness looks like. Okay, we wheeled the table back in here. One person can handle it with no problem at all. And one of the things that I did here was uh, I, I got a little bit of grinding dust on it. So I'm going to use my easy wipe. I'm going to wipe the table off. And in doing so, I can also find out whether I've got any edges that are catching, any sharp edges. Um, Anyway, so I've just done a, a portion of it, and it, it seems to work out real well. But I'll tell you what's really critical about this is, after I've done all the welding, how flat is it? You know, I mean, we've got the tab and slot, and I welded, and, you know, there's all kinds of things going on here that should change the metal a little bit. And so I decided to uh, bring a straight edge here. So might as well go right to the middle of the table. Go to the middle of the table, put a straight edge on there, and... You know, the question I've got is I can look under the straight edge here and see if I see any light. And I, I can't to any degree. But let's get a little more sophisticated. I've got a little feeler gauge here, just like a little pin gauge. And I'm just going to call it my go-no-go -no -go gauge because I, I need to have somewhere within 10 thousandths flat. Uh, just so I can use my instruments. i got a magnetic base here for height gauges and things like that. So I've got a micrometer here and I'm measuring this little gauge. It's ten thousandths. So let's put it up here and see if anywhere it'll poke through. And so far it hasn't. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, so uh, I'm sure they're not going to certify anything under 10 thousandths, but uh, uh, I can't ask for any better for, you know, a, a workbench. Uh, there's some advantages of a magnetic table. You know, one of them is I can use this magnetic base torch holder for my TIG torches and MIG torches, and, and you can see this magnetic base for instrumentation. Uh, if ever I need to, to go ahead and... and and do something that cannot have magnetism to it, I'll go ahead and put a, a chunk of aluminum on here and weld right on top of it. So uh, this pretty much covers this table. Okay, now when we do a do-it-yourself program, we try to find out what the price is. So, you know, we'll go to YouTube, or we'll go to eBay, we'll, we'll search around. This unit here is a, a two foot by three foot unit, and it's the complete unit with the wheels and everything. So be careful what you order, but it's a steal. Uh, we found this somewhere around three hundred dollars. Uh, I can't even buy the materials for that, so I don't know how they're doing it. Uh, thumbs up, anyway. Uh, so, tabandslot.com. Uh, thank you guys, and uh, we'll keep testing your equipment. We're probably going to end up uh, getting a long one. We're going to do some fuselages for a kit aircraft or you know uh, some of the smaller planes. So we're going to need something for hold downs, and uh, I'm pleased. So. Uh, you got the Mr. Tig thumbs up on this. Thank you for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig. To stay up with the latest Tig welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.